Thank you. It is uh, wonderful to be here with all of you, and I uh, look forward to this afternoon with you and uh, learning more about the neocatechumen and the communities here. And let us begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you as we begin the season of Advent. We ask you, Lord, to renew within our hearts an ever deeper faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, whose feast we will celebrate in four weeks. Help us to remember the depth of your love for us and help us to live in that communion of love with you, your Son, and the Holy Spirit. Infill our hearts and minds with your presence so that we may be your light to the world. We ask you too, Lord, to continue to bless all of us and to bless the way continue to help those who journey on the way that they may come to know and to receive your love for them and to be your witnesses in the world. And we ask all of this in the name of your son, Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you you uh, you applauded when Archbishop came in, but now let's give him an official welcome to Colorado, back to Colorado. We want to uh, give an official thank you to Father Andrew Kemberling, the pastor of this parish, for letting us use his facilities today. And we would like to, uh, at this point, introduce to you the uh, national team responsible for the neocatechumenal way in the United States and Guam and the Caribbean and many places, many places, anyhow. Uh, Giuseppe Cenerini and his wife Claudia. And, and Father Angelo, the priest on their team. I'm going to turn the, the microphone over to Giuseppe at this point. He would like to make introductions of all of you to the Archbishop.
First of all, I want to thank the Archbishop for coming. I would like also to greet uh, Bishop Eisen from Pueblo, from the Asia of Pueblo. We want to give an applause. Also, Father Matt, the Secretary of the Archbishop, welcome. Then, I don't know the name of all the priests, but I'd like to greet all the priests who are present. Un applause for them. Welcome. There is also here present the director of the Redentorist Matter Seminary, Father Florian, and the Vice Rector, Giovanni. Also present are the seminarian of the Diocesan Missionary Seminary of the Archdiocesan Missionary Seminary of Denver, Redentorist Matter. If they stand up a moment, the seminarian. Welcome. When, when the new Archbishop, uh, there is also, there is with us Adelki and Franca. Adelki and Franca have helped also to help the canonical setting of the seminaries. And now after, we are going to visit also the other seminary in the United States. We want to give them Welcome. Echo, when an, a new archbishop comes in, in a diocese, even though we knew Aquila, when th things, uh, Archbishop Aquila, we knew when things started here many years ago, when there was still Archbishop Stafford, and there was the World Youth Day in '93, and some of these uh, priests stood up in, uh, where in those times were young people, or else they stood up in that occasion at the World Youth Day in Denver, which was something fantastic, it was really uh, beautiful because it was one of the first one, because the first one was, the first big one was Santiago, then there was Chestokov, and this was really um, the beginning of this tradition of the World Youth Day, which has been fantastic. So even though we knew him since long, he's the new Archbishop here, and we are very happy that he has been appointed for this very important task of uh, leading, guiding, being the, being the Archbishop in this diocese, which plays a very important role in the Church of the United States, especially in this area between uh, you know, the West and the East, I think is very important. Uh, when a new Archbishop is appointed, we always like to introduce the communities to him when, when uh, Archbishop Aquila was here, they were still beginning, the way it was beginning. Also now it's beginning in many parishes. And also to explain a little bit the itinerary and where the, we made there a schema of the way eh, in which uh, and where are the communities present here in that uh, step. Because the Holy See has uh, recognized the way not as a movement or an association, which are good things, but always uh, um, Kiko and Carmen were always very, um, uh, with, the, with the help of many others, that we are not an association or a movement, but we are an itinerary to help, to, to help the Holy Spirit has somehow raised this itinerary to help in the formation of rediscovering baptism. And, and so, uh, finally, the only, um, uh, 25 cardinals wrote, among them there was also Cardinal Ratzinger in those times, uh, wrote to the then Pope, who was John Paul II, saying well, the nature of the way is that of being an itinerary of Christian formation, which today is very necessary, is not the only one, but this is one itinerary of Christian formation, and John Paul II accepted it and uh, um, recognized it, and in the statutes he recognized it as a way of implementing um, Catholic formation in, in, um, today. So, and this is also important because then there were many vocations who were beginning to appear, and the, uh, the formation of the Redentorist Mater Seminary, the Redentorist Mater Seminary are not uh, seminaries of the way, because some people understand it, this, they are under the jurisdiction of the bishop, of the bishop of the ordinary, or the ordinary. The only difference is that there is 
a formation, the Christian formation, side by side with the presbyteral formation, the Christian formation continues through the way, through the neocatechumenal way. But they are, in, in, in this uh, seminarian, in this priest, are from the Diocese of Denver, also with the possibility of a missionary opening to the world, according to the, to the decision of the Archbishop. Now, the, when this, the, the, um, we made there the schema, the, um, every community is born, in the beginning there is written initial catechesis, announcement of the kerygma. Echo. This is when it's two months, it's a catechesis of two months, which is done in the parish. Before beginning the catechesis, we speak with the pastor, and we usually speak that today, most of the work of the parish is to do a pastoral work of conserving the faith of the people who already gone to church, which is very important. The pastoral work which is based on finding Christ, you find Christ in the sacraments, in the Eucharist, so the people are invited to go to the Eucharist, the people are invited to go to the confession, because Christ is present in the, conf in the confession, the people are invited to have some spiritual dire direction with a priest, because also in the priest there is a presence of Christ, and to obey the, the magisterium, because in the bishop there is a, a presence of Christ, but mainly to, to help the poor, because in the poor also there is a presence of Christ, but this pastoral work which we call it a pastoral work of, with a word uh, sacramentalization so based on the sacrament, today faces a challenge, which is that the majority of the people has outside the church. In Colorado, I read the statistic, those who are Catholics are 16% of the population. And of these 16%, I don't know how many go to church. Many don't go to church and left the church. So there is a, a really a need of evangelizing. Also because we say to the pastor, the pastor is responsible not only for those who are enrolled or are Catholic. The, the, the parish is responsible for everybody. It's responsible for, recently Kiko had a convivence of Asian bishop, which was fantastic because the Asian bishop, they find the situation of announcing the good news also to the, to the Hindus, without making violence or proselytism. But Pope Benedict says, every man has the right to listen to the good news, to the kerygma. We call it the kerygma. Kerygma is a technical word in, in, in Greek, which is usually translated with the preaching. But the real translation would be announcement. Kiko recently made a book, uh, a book under, with the suggestion of Cardinal Cagnizares, who wrote the foreword and also Cardinal Schoenborn, because he was with them at the Synod for the new evangelization. And they said it would be very important to put in a book what is the kerygma, a, a, a kerygma, not, not theoretically. So how do you announce the kerygma? Because today, one of the biggest challenge of the church is that somehow what is called the revealed anthropology, so that, that man is wounded by sin, by original sin, that therefore is an inclination to evil, which, which in the letter to the Hebrews said the devil, the devil keeps men slave through the fear of this anthropology is challenged. And many times also the Catholics do not know. That in many places they teach that there is no original sin. There is no, and, and that somehow is Mr. Nice. Everything is Mr. Nice. So Cardinal Schoenborn and Cardinal Canizares ask Kiko, we'll give you a copy as soon as we translate it. We are translating it in English. Eh? It is, uh, and uh, so it begins with the kerygma, two months, if the pa and we say to the pastor, look, this pastoral work of sacramentalization has to be complemented by a pastoral work of evangelization. But in order to, do, to reach out the 85% who are not in the church or 90% who do not come to church. But this pastoral work of evangelization uh, needs signs that may speak also to those who have no faith. And the sign, Jesus Christ speaks of two signs, two signs that says they can speak also to those who have no faith. The first one is love each, love each other as I have loved you. From this love, they will know that you are my disciple. He loved us in the dimension of the cross. He loved us enemies. He loved us sinners. He forgave our sins. He took our, our sins upon himself. And if, if this love is present, in a, in a group of people, visibly, the people will know that they are disciples of Christ. 
And the other sign, the second sign that Jesus speaks is, be perfectly one as I am one with the Father, and the world will know that, that, you, that he has sent, the, the, the Father has sent me. The son. If there is a group in a parish, a reality, a community, where there is this unity, which is very difficult because we can make a party, we can make a club, but here there are people, English speaking, Spanish speaking, men, women, young, old. What unites us here in this room tonight is only Christ. There is no other thing, only Christ. If these two signs appear in a parish, but in order to appear these signs of love to the enemy, love in the dimension of the cross, and unity, in order to begin to appear, our faith has to grow. Because only if one has Christ inside, the grace of God, he can love in this dimension. So in order to get to this dimension of faith, our faith must grow. So we invite in the parish those who want, if you are suffering, we put banners, we put, uh, because if you are suffering, if you're looking an answer, if your marriage is in difficulty, if you don't know why you're living, come and listen. We invite them to listen. And then with those who listen, we begin these two months, which are made of three parts. The first part is an announcement of the kerygma. We ask you, who are you? What is the meaning of life? And then the conclusion of this part is a feast of conversion, which is a celebration of reconciliation with individual confession. It's beautiful to see how the people rediscover the confession as something fundamental for their life. People who were maybe 20 years, 30 years without confession, they begin to discover the church as really Christ that forgives their sins. The second part is an introduction, always in those two months, is an introduction to the scripture. We begin to introduce them to the scripture, presenting them certain keys like uh, Abraham is you. The story of the Exodus is what God wants to do with each man, to take him out, not of Egypt. Egypt is an image of, of our slavery, which is selfishness. Echo this would like, and, and, and then the second part is concluded with handing over the Bible to each those, of those who are coming. By the church, usually we invite the bishop to do that because we, we believe that you can enter into the Word of God through the teaching of the church, not by yourself. You cannot do your own free reading. It is true, and that's why the, the Bible is handed over by the uh, ordinary of the diocese or by someone that he sends if he cannot go. And the last part in, is uh, in a retreat, in a convivence, we say living, to, uh, uh, an experience of living together in which they, they to discover the Eucharist, the Eucharist as the celebration of the, of the Paschal mystery, the sacrifice of Christ and his resurrection, this aspect so, so fundamental. And in the end, it is proclaimed, the Sermon of the Mountain, as the image of what God wants to do in all the baptized. When this began in Rome in many years ago, some people said, How about you? Some, some pastors went to the bishop and they said, these people want, to be, want the people to do again baptism. And, and they made a, a kind of denunciation. There was an investigation. And then exactly in those years, Paul VI received Kiko in the communities. And Paul VI, on May, on May 8th, the feast of, of Our Lady of Pompeii, and the Pope made a fantastic speech, which we will we, we'll give it to you. He said, uh, you do what the early church did before baptism. You do it after, a Pope baptismal catechumen. Before or after doesn't matter, he said. The important thing is that it's done, that you aim at the authenticity of faith. With this intervention, the Holy Father, all the accusation went, <laughs> went down. So this is the first, and so we ask at the end of those two months if they want to begin this itinerary, in which will last several years of formation. Those who accept, those who want, then the, the birth of the community is born, and they begin to walk. And the first two years, we, the first period, we call it is a pre-catechumenate. It's like a, a, a it's, it's not exactly a pre-catechumenate because the majority are baptized. But somehow is a quasi-pre-catechumenate, so to reflect on what is faith. 
uh, and to begin like akenosis, we made that little sketch of Jesus, uh, Jesus, Jesus with those steps going down, which is like the baptismal pool. In the early church, you would go down, 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 bury the old man. No, first of all, know that you are a sinner, which is the most difficult thing. Pius XII says, the sin of this age is that nobody sees that he's a sinner. Uh, to begin to say, how do you do that? Because in the community, one speaks always, another one doesn't speak, another one may be criticized when you say something, another one, and so you begin that you are not able to love. You thought that you love everybody, that you were, you begin concretely to see that somehow com uh, confronted with the cross of Christ, we are not able to, to forgive. And so begin this kenosis, and the community goes on that tripod, which is Christian life, which is the word of God, a celebration of the word a month, a, a week, the liturgy, a celebration of the Eucharist every week, and community, a meeting of the community once a month. This is the way they begin. And in the beginning, they begin to study the Bible in the word of God, uh, studying like a vocabulary. What, what does it mean water in the Bible? What does it mean oil in the Bible? What does it mean door in the Bible? They will discover the door is Christ. They begin to understand the language of the Bible. And for two years, they do this until the first scrutiny. Here, uh, in, uh, to, to make it a little, I don't want to be too long, uh, Archbishop, bear with me. <laughs> but where is the list of the community? Echo. Uh, in this step, just begun, just those who have begun, between the birth of the community and the first scrutiny, here there is. I, I, will, I will say the name of the community if you stand up, so this is a way to introduce it to Archbishop Aquila. There is the sixth community of St. Louis. St. Louis. The pastor is here, Father Reikra, Echo. Echo, the sixth community. Stay, don't, don't sit down a moment. The sixth community, who is the responsible? What is your name? Look, are you married? No, very well. Then there is the fourth... <laughs> no, no, very well. No, <laughs> no intention. And Father Raycraft, who is the pastor of the... Uh, <laughs> then there is the fourth Spanish community of St. Anthony of Padua. The fourth Spanish. Stay up, stay up. Don't sit down. Stay up a moment. So... The, uh, fourth Spanish Saint Anthony of Padova. Fourth Spanish Saint Anthony of Padova. Echo. There are some, some there. Who is the responsible? Echo. Then there is the third, the third of Sacred Art of Jesus. The third Spanish of Sacred Art of Jesus. Boulder. 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 Third Spanish. Echo. Some representative there. Ah, there. They are there. Stay up. No, don't sit down. Don't sit down. Wait a moment. Raise your hands, raise your hands when I echo, echo, greet them. Raise, raise your hands. <laughs> wait, wait, don't sit, don't sit. Then there is the third English of St. James. Third English of St. James. Where is it? Echo, raise your hands. Third English of St. James. And there is also, there is also the pastor of St. James. Where is the pastor of St. James? Father Felix, an applause for him. Then there is the, the third English, the third English of St. Thomas Moore. St. Thomas Moore, third English of, of this parish with the fa Father, the past. The, the third English of Immaculate Conception in Lafayette. Lafayette, where are they? Raise your hands. Greet the bishop, greet the archbishop. The, the second English of Our Lady of Peace in Greeley, in Greeley. Raise your hands. Tell me when there is the pastor. Tell me. The pastor is here also, the pastor. Ah, he's coming, the pastor is coming. Then there is, ah, there it is, the pastor. Stand up a moment. <laughs> then there is, the uh, second uh, Spanish of Santa Teresa, Friedrich. Friedrich. Echo, raise your hands. The pastor is here. I don't know. The pastor is Father Hernan. Tell me when there is the pastor. Echo. Then there is 
the second the second uh, wait a moment i lost here the second english of ascension in aurora montebello aurora where are they second english raise your hands in spanish va bene raise your hands ecco. then there is the first english of sant antonio of padua Already said it. Will you say it? No. Sant Antonio of Padua, raise your hands. The first English of Santa Teresa of Friedrich. Friedrich. Raise your hands, raise your hands. The first English of Our Lady of Peace in Greeley. The first English of San John the Baptist in Denver. In Denver, San John the Baptist. No, it's not. Johnstown, I'm sorry, Johnstown. Echo, raise your hands. The pastor is Father Emilio, stand up. Father Emilio. Uh, the first English of San John the Evangelist, Loveland. There, welcome. Well, the first the first English of St. John of Arc, Arvada. The pastor is here. Welcome. Where are they? Where are you? Okay. Then there is uh, the first English of Immaculate. Uh, no, Echo. Then, Echo. Then there are also some communities. Well, I, I'll, I'll introduce them after. Echo. These communities that you have seen are all those that have just started now. They are begin between between the uh, birth of the community and the first scrutiny. The first scrutiny with the people, an applause for them, you can sit down. The first scrutiny is a moment in which we begin to represent to the people their own baptism, the dialogue of faith. What are you, what are you asking from the church of God? And you say, Faith. And why do you want faith? Because faith gives me eternal life. In these two years, they began to understand that they need more faith. More faith to be authentic witness, especially because today there is a cultural wars, war against Christianity. Imagine that now recently in, uh, in uh, Colorado they approved uh, the legalization of marijuana without understanding the, the tragedy that is for many families, the destruction, all of this. So there is a cultural war and it's very important to rediscover. And then also the sense of the cross, they are presented with the cross in the sense that the cross is, for a Christian, is not a sign of a tragedy. The cross is glorious because Christ has answered to the cross with his resurrection. So after the first scrutiny, they begin to deepen the way to study the scripture they begin to study the great stages of the history of salvation. The call of uh, Abraham, the exodus, the way going through the desert, the entrance in the promise. And they study reading the fathers of the church, reading also uh, some theologian like St. Thomas, or for example, certain books, echo, many, many books that have uh, to help in this. The community that have done the first scrutiny here, now there are much less. Eh? There are many more who are just starting. There is the fourth English of St. Louis. Stand up. Fourth English of St. Louis. Fourth English. Where are they? Raise your hands. Greet them. The, the, second, the second English of Sacred Heart of Jesus, Boulder. Second English of Boulder. Raise your hands. The, the second Spanish of St. Anthony of Padua, second Spanish. Echo. The, the first Spanish of Ascension, Aurora. Ascension, welcome. The first, the first Spanish of St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist. and the first English of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, Fort Collins. The pastor is here. Father? Father Gregory, welcome. Un applauso for all the more. Welcome. 
Then, between, this is still, we say, the, the time of the precatechumen, which is a time to help us to get to humility. Humility is, is not that finishes with uh, the entrance of the catechumen. I mean, it's just an introduction to begin to know that you are a sinner, to get down a little bit those steps. And in the Shema, they are presented with the prayer, you shall love God above everything. Because Christ was, was asked, what is the greatest commandment? And he says, Shema Israel, listen Israel, you shall love God. And in this uh, passage, we teach also to the family to begin every Sunday morning to pray with the children. Every Sunday morning, we, we explain the uh, the, the transmission of faith is very important to read the Psalms, to sing, and then to ask all the children, how are you? Does this word say something? They read, for example, the, a piece of the scripture, the creation of the world, or the flood, or the, or the gospel of that Sunday, and they dialogue with the children. It is something fantastic. It's an experience fantastic for which we see that many, thank God, uh, most of our youth, they follow in the church, they continue in the church, which is a great joy, an immense joy. Also, we introduce the, the, the families to the fact that a family is centered on three altars. The first altar is the Eucharist, the altar of the Eucharist, where they receive the life from Christ. From Christ. But also in the house, there is another altar, which is where they eat together. Eating together is a sign of communion, of participating in life. And the third altar is the nuptial bed. Where, where they offer each other, uh, one to another, open to the will of God, in, in, a, in, a, in a donation, in a language of donation, which John Paul II explained very well in the theology of the body. We introduce all these catechesis in the Shema. And then the, 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 there is the second scrutiny. The second, in the Shema, there are only four communities that have just done the Shema. There is the fifth English of St. Louis. If they stand up a moment, fifth English. Then there is the first English of Louisville, St. Louis in Louisville. Echo. Welcome. The, the first English of St. Patrick in Holyoke. The pastor is here, Father, Father Bill Jungman. And then the first Spanish of Santa Teresa in Frederick. The second scrutiny, they are presented with the words of Jesus Christ on the relationship with the idols. And the main uh, symbol of all the idols is always money. And uh, uh, that's why Jesus says you cannot serve God and mammon. And also the catechism at number 2344 says there cannot be a Christian who has not chosen God above money and wealth. And we present this word to them, and everybody take it very seriously, and they are invited, the gospel says, go sell your riches and give them to the poor, but not, to, but in a sense of freedom, in a sense of entering, discovering that God provides, and it is true that God provides, begin, people begin, uh, there cannot be a Christian if there is not a new relationship with money, not, not, any, not to be poor, but then on the contrary, to enjoy the, 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 the gift that God gives, and also to be generous with the poor, with the church, and with everything. And in this, and, and usually, and God gives a hundred percent. And it's amazing to see. It's amazing to see how it is true. God really gives hundred percent. And with the, the, there is a final rite in which they are invited to do this sign, and everybody does freely what they want to do. Some people do it. The, the, Anybody, nobody goes to see what they do. And this collection is used for the poor of the parish and, and for the diocese. It's given to the bishop and to the pastor to help the poor of the parish and the diocese. Here, there are a few communities who have done the second scrutiny or are in the second scrutiny. They stand up. There is Fort of St. Louis, the Fort of St. Louis, Eng Englewood. This. Ec the. The second English of St. Thomas More. The second English of St. Thomas More.
Pastor. Welcome. There is the first English of Holy Family. Holy Family. Welcome. Move your hands so that the bishop can see you. <laughs> I don't see you. <laughs> the first Spanish of Saint Anthony of Padua. Where are they? The first of San Gabriel the Archangel, Colorado. No, these are from Colorado. The, the first English of St. James, Denver. First English of St. James. The first Spanish of Sacred Heart, Boulder. First Spanish. With the second scrutiny, it begins the proper catechumenate, in which there are three basic steps. One is the initiation to prayer. The people are, uh, you, uh, an applause for all of those. You can sit down, thank you. Uh, with the initiation to prayer, the people receive the breviary from the church. Always, in all of these steps, uh, we invite always the, the bishop. If the bishop cannot come, we'll send someone, but somehow that is, because the, the, the bishop is the one in charge of Christian formation. We can do it only if somehow the bishop gives us this communion, this mandate in a sense. And that's why it's very important that he knows what we are doing. That's why we are, we are doing this meeting. Because the bishop is the head of all catechesis for baptism, for communion, for confirmation, for everything. He is the one. This is a form of catechesis for adults. And so, in addition to prayer, after already five years, they receive the breviary and they begin to pray the breviary um, uh, by themselves every morning. And they begin to do it. And they begin to understand that the breviary is not that God, the, the prayer of the church is the breviary. The Vatican Council wanted that the people of God began to receive the prayer of the church, the prayer of Jesus, the Psalms. And they begin, to, they understand that to pray is not to make a favor to God, but it's to help us. We need to, do, to pray in order to enter the will of God, uh, to get oxygen. To, because without prayer, faith dies. We say, when you see maybe it's a Christian, maybe that a marriage that, uh, or a priest in Christ, it, it, maybe in many years, they have not been praying. They have, they have left prayer. And uh, uh, here there are, Two communities who have uh, done the decision to pray to prayer. Eh? All of the all of the others are. It's like a school. No, you see the different classes. It's like a school. There is the community of first English Sacred Heart Boulder. For example, uh, how many here were, I don't know how many here were people who before the catechesis were not going to church. Raise your hands. Those who, uh, those who were local and those who before the catechesis, keep it up, keep it up. Eh, many people were not going to church. So we don't ask them anything. They receive. But at the traditio symboli, then they receive the creed. Uh, which was one of the fundamental steps of the catechumenate. They receive the creed, they begin to study the creed. And they begin also, we invite them to, be, to begin to go two by two through the parish, house by house, to announce Jesus Christ, not to make propaganda for the neocatechumenal way, just to give their experience and to announce the good news, the kerygma to these people, to go with a, with a cross eh, the, in the to go to the cross and, and announce that God loves them, that God loves the sinner. Every time that we announce that God, God loves the sinner, Christ is interceding for that person. There is a person that, that can be touched by the grace of God. And uh, they begin to do uh, all the communities for at least two years. 
to go. So, so th this once was done by the pastor visiting the every house, but to, and also the canon law says the, this is what the pastor should do. But today is very difficult for many reasons. So somehow here it is that begin is interesting because we have seen in many places. For example, I was in a parish of Rome, the Catechais, and they had opened already the second kingdom hall, the Jehovah Witness. After five years that the first two communities had been going house by house, first they closed one kingdom hall. And after five years, they had to close the second. Because the people, they, seeing that the Catholic were going to, uh, to them, because many times, uh, the people, they go through, a, through a, a morning, someone died, and they are alone. To see in the church that Catholics are going to them, they prefer them to the Jehovah Witness, for sure, you know? And, and, and so they had to close the uh, Kingdom Hall. So in the Traditio symbol here, in the Traditio, which there is, the, uh, uh, is like a preparation for the Reditio, when they will make a public profession, there are three communities. There is the Third English of St. Louis, Third English of St. Louis. Uh, lift your hands, raise your hands, move your hands. Uh, then there is the second English of St. Louis. Echo. Welcome, welcome. And there is also the first Spanish of St. Louis. Here you see, there are in St. Louis, which is one of the oldest parishes with the way, there are, there are in this moment there are three communities, all these brothers who are going door to door, door to door. And many times they find, really we have seen miracles, like uh, people that somehow came back to the church, they reconciled, uh, uh, once they entered in a, in a house uh, and there was one guy who is, who is hanging, humming. there was the wife, help me, help me. They helped him, uh, they, sp they announced to him the good news to this guy who was hanging. And uh, all kinds, incredible people who were dying alone. And they began somehow to go to visit them. Many times people are alone today. One of the tragedies of our time is loneliness. So somehow they begin. When they finish, there will be the fourth community will begin. And then the fifth. So the, this begins, this becomes a permanent feature of the pastoral work of the parish, eh? this of the tradition. Un applauso for these communities. And, and then, uh, the, this time is concluded by the Reditio, in which they make a public profession of faith in the parish during Vespers, they make during Lent, uh, twice a week, they make Vespers, like a Quaresimale, like you say, a Lenten uh, uh, celebration in which there, there are Vespers and then three or four brothers, they go and they say why they, why they believe in God, why they believe in God, why, how they experience God, the, the love of Christ. And there in the Reditio there are two communities, there is the first English of St. Thomas More, they have just done the Reditio. And uh, there is also the first Immaculate Conception of Lafayette. Uh, at, this step, uh, at this step of the Reditio, we invite now the community as a whole, not anymore as individual, because as individual they've already been, uh, been helping the parish. But now all the community, part of their Christian formation is to help the pastor. And we make a meeting and we ask the pastor, what, what need do you have? Do you need help for catechism class? Do you need help for CCD? Do you need help to clean the church? Do you need help to iron the linen? Do you need help uh, to visit the people who had a morning? And they all put themselves at the service of the pastor. This is, this is part of the way. But this, we, we give time because some of them were not going to church before. So now they have, the others who are going, many of them, when they reach this uh, step, they already were involved in the in course. But the community as such, we wait a little bit you know, to get a maturation so that to begin to help the pastor, so that the pastor is not alone, also which is today something very difficult. An applause for these two communities. We're getting to the end, eh? <laughs> We're getting over. <laughs> Forgive me. And then, uh, finally, after the Reditio, we begin the Our Father, 
In the Our Father, there is here one community only in the diocese who has begun the Our Father, who is the first English of St. Louis. They stand up a moment, the first English of St. Louis. Echo. Many of these, many of these priests have been working with them when they were seminarians or were not seminarians, and now the uh, the Our Father is is like a second initiation to prayer, deeper than the first. Now they will begin to say not only morning prayer, but also the Angelus, the the Vespers, and also to meet in the parish in the morning to to say morning prayer during Advent and Lent. So that usually in the parish during Advent, open to everybody. It's open to all the parishioners. So that now it begins to become a, 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 fe a feature of the parish that during Advent and Lent, there is always the possibility at six o'clock or 5.30, according to the, and they go, and they go seriously. And then th this is the first part of their father. Then the second part of their father is a pilgrimage to the tomb of Peter and to the, to the holy house of Loreto. They receive Mary as their mother, and they receive the rosary. Many of them were praying the rosary before, but today, you know, that the youth, for example, they have a lot of prejudice because they receive the rosary, and they begin to say the rosary every day. It's a beautiful pilgrimage to the holy house in Loreto, and the final part is a catechesis on our father, which is taken from the, every father of the church, made, uh, Cyprian, San Cyril, everybody, and they begin to study, and then they receive finally the uh, catechesis on the Our Father. I can applause for St. Louis, the first community. The, the, the last part, uh, uh, the second part, we say the catechumen, we say simplicity, in order to discover that the only thing we really need is not money or I don't know what, is God. To, the, to simplify, the only thing we are, why we are not happy is be, if we have separated ourselves from God. The only thing we need is God. And the last part that is, that is not any community, I don't know if the, the community went already to Loreto, not yet. There, in March, you should tell the date to the bishop, the archbishop, he maybe has a chance to, to come or maybe to, to some uh, in, um, uh, uh, envoy. <laughs> it's very interesting because, and the, the last part is the election, the election in which they rediscover their baptism. They rediscover the baptism, and it is concluded with the renewal of the baptismal promises, and then with a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, and especially to the empty tomb, to see the resurrection, to, to, to witness the resurrection, and then they come back. In these years, in which this is like a school of faith has begun to develop, in the parish begin to be like a series of community, six, seven. There are parishes now, for example, in one parish in California, there are 30 communities. There are 20 in Spanish, seven in English, three in Vietnamese. It's like a school, each one you know, discovering different aspects, but not separated from the parish, because this, they go to the parish to help the parish, to help the parish, especially today, the evangelization is so, is so needy, and the, the parish begin to become like a community of communities which is not the only thing there is, there is some people say a neocatechumenal parish but it doesn't exist a neocatechumenal parish on the contrary the, the priest they have to help every group they have to help all groups god works in many ways this is one school of faith and it's very important for us that the bishop knows what is happening uh, i don't know if you give us two minutes more i finished i would like to maybe hear one witness from from uh, from uh, from some bro from some some brothers eh? ah i didn't end the, i didn't present forgive me forgive me i uh, since the archbishop is the metropolitan of this ecclesiastical region we invited here also the communities of pueblo with the bishop stand up the communities of pueblo there are there are Welcome, welcome. There are three communities in Pueblo. Then there is, we invited also the community of Colorado Spring. The pastor from Pueblo, please. A Colorado Spring, Colorado Spring. Welcome, Father. What is the name?
And then also three communities from Wyoming. Wyoming. Echo. They, they tell me I did not introduce two communities. If they stand up, which are they? From St. James, two communities from St. James. <laughs> Welcome. Sorry. Well, who, who is the responsible? Who is the responsible? Who is the responsible? This is the, this is St. James. St. James. And then there is also from St. Elizabeth, one community that we not introduce. Second community of St. Elizabeth. Sorry. They tell, I didn't, I didn't do the list, eh? <laughs> they tell me also the second community of Lafayette. Second community of Lafayette. Welcome. Did we forget someone else? Second Ascension, First Ascension English. First Ascension English. Welcome. Third, third Spanish Saint Anthony. Stand up. Anybody else that we did not introduce? Oh, two communities from St. John the Baptism in Johnstown. Where are they? Boy, there are lots of this. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Anybody else? Did we forget? Okay, sorry, eh? But we, we want to greet everybody and we w wanted to hear just a. a uh, maybe one experience, uh, some experience from three or four brothers. Maybe Mat Mateus, ven aquí. Mateus. My name is uh, Mateusz Rotajczak. I'm from Poland. Uh, I'm 23 years old. And uh, I was born Catholic, born, you know, raised in a fantastic Catholic family, uh, you know, always going to church with my parents. But then when I started entering my adolescence, I started rebelling against them, looking, you know, for, for life outside of the church and smoking pot, uh, drinking, going with the girls. And, uh, and, it, and it brought me to, to a crisis, to a serious crisis in my life that uh, somehow I, I, I couldn't see the joy, the happiness in the church. Somehow, I was so deceived that I couldn't find it there. But on the other hand, I also knew my heart was telling me that you know all this, all this mess is not the way to life. So I entered this crisis, uh, in which, through which God, you know, opened my ear to listen to the announcement of the good news. In that situation, I was invited to this catechesis, in, in which I received this announcement that, that God loves me as I am, and somehow it resonates me, in me very strong. It touched me, it touched me a lot, you know. And it's still, you know, it's, it's the, the let us say the engine of my life this announcement. And, uh, and then working with the community, you know, uh, receiving, you know, uh, many, many catechesis, knowing the scriptures. I also discovered my vocation. I stood up in Israel, 2009, uh, feeling that God loves me. And then, 2009? Yeah, in this small pilgrimage. I stood up there. <laughs> I, stu I stood up there. And uh, then, you know, then through the, through the church, also they, they you know, they, they, they encouraged me to, to, to continue. And now I see how, how crucial in my, for, you know, for my vocation is the, the community to, to get nourished, uh, in the, to see the, the brothers, the married couples, their sufferings. Many times it opens my eyes when, when I'm in crisis, you know, having difficulties. I think that, you know, studies is the end of the world and I can see that. And then I'm very happy, really, really helped by it. Terry, where is Terry? Where is Terry? Where is Terry? The responsible of the come here. Um, my name is 
Terry Stanley. I'm married to Bessie over there. Come, come the wife, here, the wife. Bessie. Come here. Yeah, this is... Wait, wait, just, just to see if it is true. Huh? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Come keep me on. So this is my beautiful wife, Bessie. Um, a while back in my life, I, I was a hardcore heroin addict. Um, and I went through drug rehabilitation and, and was still strung out, still on drugs. Um, I've resisted the church at every turn. Um, and somehow, God's love called out to me. I heard it through the announcement of this way uh, today. Uh, Whereas 10 years ago, I think we were ready for divorce. Um, we weren't even good roommates. And uh, about a month ago, we celebrated our 35th wedding anniversary because God is in the middle of our marriage. That's a cute. Ben, ben uh, Dolores, Dolores with the husband. Come here a moment. Benedict. Um, this is my husband Eric. We have 11 children. We had six before we started um, in the catechesis uh, and before, uh, before we started walking after the twins were born we uh, became sterile. We, there was no more possibility of having a baby. The doctors cut like an inch off each fallopian tube. It was over. And we suffered very much in our marriage because there was no more purpose to our life because there was no more life in our marriage. And in 1995, we had walked uh, five years in the way. And um, with the help of the church, the catechist, the, the way, Father Andrew Kimberly, we became open to life. We went to Mexico uh, with $3,000 with all the kids and they did the operation and it was really a miracle because the fallopian tubes are very 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 tiny and we have five more <laughs> since then and so i'm very happy for the church and for the way i i also wanted to say that four of the older children that are married also walk in the way and are the my daughters are open to life as well, and so we have lots of grandchildren now. We have seven grandchildren and one more on the way. Uh, Stephen and Susan, come here a moment. I'm Susan, and this is Steve. We walk in the first community, and um, we walk in the first community in uh, St. Louis. And um, when I went to the catech, when I went to the catechesis, um, I was really morally bankrupt. I was uh, selling drugs, committing adultery in my marriage. I wasn't a Catholic. For some strange reason, God allowed me to marry a Catholic, brought me to the church, and um, and over time. I stopped selling drugs, stopped committing adultery, and the, the Lord renewed our marriage. And uh, for the last seven years, we've been on the mission in one way or another. Now we're in Dallas. And all of this is out of gratitude because I am a very selfish, lazy person. And I wouldn't lift a finger for anybody unless God gave me the, the grace and the love to do it. So that's why, um, that's why we're in the Mission in Dallas Seminary right now and very happy. So. Oh, 
of Archbishop. We have eight children. Uh, this is my wife, Annette. We have eight children, two in heaven. My name is Steve Waymel. And uh, years ago, 20 years ago, actually, Annette did the convenience first, and the community was born 20 years ago today, December 2nd. I didn't go to that catechesis. But I followed because I thought it was something good for my children. I didn't need it. Uh, we, were, we had six children then. We were on the board of uh, Christ the King for the school. I went to Notre Dame. Annette went to St. Mary's. We were the ultimate Catholic family, except our marriage was uh, really destroying itself, and we didn't really see it. About nine months later, at a convenience in California, I heard people's experience of what God was doing for them in their lives. And I said, I don't see God anywhere in my life. And it was at that point that God really touched me and helped me see the lie I was living because I was traveling on the road into pornography, masturbation, into strip clubs, and would come home, be a good father, work in the parish. And uh, the Holy Spirit helped me share my ex what I was doing with my wife. And uh, at that point, she was ready to separate, but with the help of uh, the church through the catechists, God began to rebuild our marriage, helped us to be open to life because we had been using birth control, had, were tired of having kids after six, we'd done our duty, and that really I see now looking back was the beginning of uh, a selfishness that crept into our marriage. And the Lord has rebuilt our marriage and given us uh, two more children, Sai and Maria, uh, as you know. Um, all of them are in communities, have had chaste relationships, a number of them are married, and the Lord is making them happy in their own right, open to life, and giving us um, many spiritual children in Wyoming and northern Colorado, and uh, continues to bless us and make our marriage better every day, and we're the same, I'm the same, I'm the same person, same temptation, same sinners, but God is there every day to help us. And one of our sons is a priest. Amazingly enough, the one that was always trouble has become uh, the priest. One minute break and then we'll continue with the Vesper and during the Vesper our Archbishop will speak. Let us stand up and we shall welcome the Archbishop singing the uh, Advent song, Here Comes the Lord. Here comes the Lord with majesty and glory, girded with power, he rose in self-splendor. Here comes the Lord with majesty and glory, girded with power, he rose in self-splendor. The world he makes firm, not to be moved. Your throne stands firm, from eternity you are. Holiness is fit into your house. Holiness is fit into your house. Here comes the Lord with majesty and glory. Girded with power, he rose himself the splendor. Here comes the Lord with majesty and glory, girded with power, he rose himself his splendor. Behold, he's coming on the clouds, he's coming and all will see him. Also those, also those who pierce him, all the nations of the earth. Here comes the Lord with majesty and glory, girded with power, he robes himself the splendor. Here comes the Lord with majesty. 
majesty and roll girded with power he robes himself his splendor O God come to my assistance Lord be his glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit Rejoice, daughter of Zion. Shout for joy, daughter of Jerusalem. Alleluia. Rejoice, daughter of Zion. The Lord's revelation to my master sit on my right. Your foes I will put beneath your feet. Prince from the day of your birth on the holy mountains. From the womb before the dawn I begot you. The master standing at your right hand will shatter kings in the day of his great wrath. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, World without end. Amen. Rejoice, daughter of Zion. Shout for joy, daughter of Jerusalem. Alleluia. Christ, our King, will come to us. The Lamb of God foretold by John. When Israel came forth from Egypt, Jacob's sons from an alien people. The sea fled at the sight, the Jordan turned back on its course. Why was it sea that you fled, that you turned back Jordan on your course? Tremble, O earth, before the Lord, in the presence of the God of Jacob. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Christ, our King, will come to us, the Lamb of God foretold by John. 
I am coming soon, says the Lord. I will give to everyone the reward his deeds deserve. I am coming soon, says the Lord. I will give to everyone the reward his deeds deserve. Alleluia, salvation, glory, and power to our God. His judgments are honest and true. Hallelujah, the Lord our all-powerful God is King. Let us rejoice, sing praise, and give Him glory. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I am coming soon, says the Lord. I will give to everyone the reward his deeds deserve. A reading from the letter to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Everyone should see how unselfish you are. The Lord is near. Lord, show us your mercy and love. Lord, show us your mercy and love and grant us your salvation, your mercy, O Lord. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, show us your mercy, O Lord. My brothers and sisters, as we begin the season of Advent, we are reminded of the twofold aspects of Advent. First, we remember the coming of Jesus Christ over 2,000 years ago, of the event of God's Word made flesh, of His love for us in Jesus Christ. And He enters the world not as a king, but rather as a powerless infant child. And he enters in poverty. And in this great event, God reveals his love for the world. And the second aspect is waiting for the second coming of Jesus that we stand firm in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We stand firm in his love for us because we have come to experience his love for us. And in this year of faith, one of the great desires of our Holy Father, Benedict XVI, is that people come to rediscover their faith that they have an encounter that is personal with Jesus Christ, that they receive his love for them in a personal way, in a particular way. For Jesus loves every one of us, every human being, in a unique and particular way, because each of us 
is unique, each and every one of us. And our relationship with the Lord is one that is particular. And one of the great fruits of the neocatechumenal way, as I listen to the testimony, is helping people to come into touch with the truth of who Jesus is, that he loves us as sinners, that he has given his life for us even before you and I were born. Over 2,000 years ago, the word was made flesh in the incarnation. He who is true God, true man, laid down his life for us and gave himself for us. And even though he knew that we would sin, and even though he knew that we would be broken, even though he knew that we would wander far from him, he still died for us. And it is precisely in his resurrection that he has conquered sin and death and revealed the fullness of his love. And my beloved sons and daughters, it is important for you to receive that truth, to understand in your hearts and in your minds the depth of love that is revealed in the Incarnation. And as you travel and as you journey along the way, in whatever portion you are in, it is a constant reminder and hopefully a deepening of your faith in Jesus Christ that it is a deepening of communion and entering into that communion of love, not just of the head, but more importantly, of the heart, that you come to receive that love in the depth of your being and to live that love out. Just recently, I met a couple who were celebrating their 62nd wedding anniversary. And with that, one could still see the joy and the love and the depth of the love that had grown and developed in those 62 years. And certainly they had their ups and downs, as any married couple does but they were faithful to each other. And as they looked at each other, one could tell the depth of their love. And it was their faith in Jesus that kept them together. He was the very glue of their relationship. And that is true for any of us in whatever vocation we are called to. And so as we continue with our celebration and as we continue in our prayer, let us pray for a deeper faith in our Lord. Let us rejoice in our hearts and let us keep our focus on Jesus because our joy will only increase the more that we keep our eyes on him who has loved us first. And then we will carry out those words, rejoice in the Lord always. Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. 
you will conceive and give birth to a son. Alleluia. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. The Almighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his heart. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. sent away empty. and to give birth to a son. Alleluia. To Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, the way, the truth, and the life, let us make our humble prayer. God, save us, Lord. Son of the Most High, your coming was announced to the Virgin Mary by Gabriel. Come and rule over your people forever. Holy One of God, in your presence, John the Baptist leapt in Elizabeth's womb. Bring the joy of salvation to all the earth. Jesus the Savior, the angel revealed your name to Joseph the just man. Come, come save your people from their sins. Light of the world, for whom Simeon and all the just waited. Come, come and comfort us. O rising sun that never sets, Zechariah foretold that you would visit us from above. Come and shine on those who dwell in darkness the shadow of death. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. All-powerful God, increase our strength of will for doing good, that Christ may find an eager welcome at his coming, and call us to his side in the kingdom of heaven, where he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
the community wanted to offer you uh, just as a memento. much for the gifts and for the witness for the sharing and thank you also for coming from as far away as you did uh, it's a tremendous testimony to our faith and a tremendous testimony to the truth that our Catholic Church is alive and well and that is wonderful to see so thank you all very much be with you. And with Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. was not life because death was reigning over us. Mary, house of benediction, salvation, has llevado hasta tu Hijo y nos has enseñado a obedecerle y hacer todo lo que Él nos diga para que transforme nuestra agua en vino nuevo victoria Hallelujah! Hallelujah!